Olivia Sor. I am Director of Impact and New Initiatives at Chequial. Chequial, we are an NGO, we are an organization that fights against disinformation. We look for different strategies to counter disinformation. Among those, there is fact-checking and debunking, which we have been doing since 2010. So today I want to share with you a bit of the experience or the things that we've learned during this process, during this year's fact-checking several presidential elections and other elections, but also what we've learned from our colleagues at Latam Chequea. Latam Chequea is a network that's coordinated by Chequeado and it's the network of Latin American fact-checkers. We are more than 40 organizations around the region and in some other countries. And so a lot of what I'm going to share with you today comes from what we've learned in those processes. So let's start the presentation. So what do we know or what we have learned from this information, elections, and on top of all that, artificial intelligence? So disinformers in general tend to use moments of crisis or moments that when there is a lot of public interest on the news to spread this information. This can be a, a political crisis, it can be a natural disaster, and elections are also a moment where there is a lot of interest in the news because we're discussing who the next president will be and we have different proposals and how are we going to vote and there's a lot of information that's going around and a lot of interest. So it's a very good time for disinformation. And why do disinformers generate this content? There are many possible dis motivations behind this information. One is money. I mean, this information is attractive. It generates clicks and that can be monetized. And it can also generate a very strong following that can then be offered products that are sold or congresses or seminars, and that can also generate money. So that's one possible motivation. There's also conviction or politics. There's conviction, for example, in many groups that are anti-vaccine and they believe very strongly uh, in the disinformation that they share. And it also happens on more partisan subjects, for example, with this information that might harm your rival, the, the rival candidate, and that might be a motivation to generate disinformation, of course. And there is always uh, this information that is generated and especially spread because people don't know it is false, that is a false content. So when we think about elections, we, know, we a lot of the time we think that what we see, the contents and the disinformation are very specific to what's happening in our country. But actually, if we zoom out, we'll see that a lot of the disinformation is quite similar among different countries at a regional and at a global level. And that knowing and understanding these trends can help us prepare and counter the disinformation. So some of the very common types of disinformation we've been seeing are, for example, small irregularities that are presented as if there were proof of fraud. And we have two examples here, one from Argentina, one from the US. And I mean, elections are processes that involve millions of people and things might go wrong that's not enough to say that there is a fraud. And what this information does many times is take those small problems, or those small mistakes or irregularities and present them as if they were proof of a systematic fraud when they are not. Another very common type of this information is that ineligible voters will be able to participate in the election. A lot of times it's, for example, migrants who do not have a right to vote according to the laws of the country that would supposedly be participating or um, deceased people who would appear in the voting role and that would be participating in the elections, which also would be uh, proof of, of fraud when it's not the case. Another kind of disinformation we see quite often is disinformation about how to vote. And this can mislead people and make them invalidate their vote so that they can't actually participate in the election. So it's quite serious if people believe in this disinformation. Um, and this is, for example, uh, an example from Mexico, where the way in which they're telling you to vote would actually invalidate your, your ballot. And another very common type of disinformation are false surveys. So surveys that are supposedly coming from a good um, company or, or a good um, process when actually they're just false content. And this can be to try to manipulate who's winning or what people think about who's winning and, or who's losing during the election. 
these are just a few examples of very common types of disinformation we say we see circulate in uh electoral process but there's many others that you can also look up and see to be prepared for the elections and what happens when, on top of all this that's already circulating and all this disinformation, we get artificial intelligence? Of course, we might get tools that are very useful and that make our work easier, uh, maybe for text, maybe for image generation, for many things, it might help us do our work faster, but it also helps disinformers a lot because it can generate false images, videos, and audios that are incredibly realistic. And this means that there are false content circulating. And it also means that we start doubting everything and we don't know if any of the videos that we're seeing or the images that we're seeing are it's true or not. So it can have a very devastating impact on our information ecosystem and in the trustworthiness of the contents that we consume and that we see. So what can we do uh, with this uh, new challenge that we're getting? Well. There's a few things that we can work on. One is warning people so that they are alert and they know that they this is happening and that they should not believe in, in any image that they're looking at. Try to identify ourselves and also share with others how to identify the small details that still today might tell us that something has been created by artificial intelligence. And it might be the case that in a few months or years, we do not have those details anymore, but as long as we have them, they're a useful tool to identify uh, AI generated images or, or videos. And also another, another thing we can do is start working more with other sources that will allow us to independently verify the information. And this is something that we've been doing as fact checkers and I think could be very helpful for others too, is to look at the broader context and see what other sources we could get to confirm or to debunk the content that we're seeing. And in more general terms, um, what can we do in front of all this disinformation or what strategies do we have to counter disinformation? From what we've been working this year and, and sharing with other colleagues, I wanted to, to share with you a few things that I think or we think could help be helpful in, in this process and in this work. One is pre-banking. So since we know a lot more now than we did about this information, what kinds of disinformation circulate, how they circulate, we can share a lot of that with others about the tactics that the disinformers use, what are the possible disinformations that can circulate during an election, and explain which are reliable sources of information. This is an image from, from what we did in last year in the elections in Argentina, in which we went through very common disinformation that we're seeing circulate and say if this was proof that there was a fraud or not and what could be done if you need to to do um a denuncia a den denounce that anything of, of this was happening um so this is just one example of how we can prevent the disinformation or can prevent people from believing in the disinformation another strategy is fact checking um, taking the false contents and debunking it and showing that it's false. And in this, besides uh, following the, the guidelines and, and doing a thorough work and, and transparent work, it is also very important to have, um, to be able to share this debunks in the same places and spaces where they originally spread. So to be on this different social media where this disinformation might be circulating, so we can actually reach those that saw the disinformation. And another strategy is media and information literacy. So this can go from work in the classrooms, but also work with uh, on social media with content that will allow people to identify a potential disinformation. And so they have more critical thinking and knowledge to identify and discard false contents by themselves. And the last thing I think is key in this process is collaboration. We know that there are many actors disinforming and generating false content. We need to collaborate across borders and with different actors to be as effective as possible. And to that, I just want to share a few tools that might be useful. This is a toolbox with different websites and spaces that, that can be useful when doing fact-checking or verification of content that you can find at Chequeado. This is Latam Chequea, where you can see different organizations that are working to counter disinformation around the region. 
and this is Portal Check, a work that we've been doing with UNESCO and La Tarchiquea, in which you can go in more depth in many of the subjects that we discussed today. Thank you very much.